Total Charging Power Solutions. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Something super easy, super quick, super doable, right there, right at your place of work, place of business. Yeah, 3TI Solutions Solar Car Park Charging Situation. It's got so much juice, it's so wonderful. You just love to see it. I'm Brian, welcome to my Tesla weekend. <laughs> So we're not fully charged, of course, checking out some of the craziest, coolest innovations. We're going to talk to Tim from 3TI. Tim, 3TI, what is it? What's going on? Hi. 3TI is uh, three technology infrastructure, and we combine solar panels, batteries, and EV charging in car parks. And the idea is this is uh, a lot of times with installation of charging, it gets real complicated. Sure. And you've got a solution that, in many cases, might not even require extensive permitting and can be put together fairly quickly. Talk about Absolutely that. right. Let me let me show you these photos over Great. here, first of all. This is what we've done uh, on the large scale car parks. Uh -huh. so we've got JP Morgan and Bentley, where we've put in um, a thousand parking spaces and 1500 parking spaces, respectively, putting um, three or four megawatts into the factory or into the data center. Those projects take anything up to two years to develop, planning permission, grid connections, so on and so forth. So we were looking for a solution that would be quick and simple, and that's Copilio 3. So, so it's, it's made of a recycled shipping container. Right. Uh, and in fact, we get eight of these units out of one shipping container, so we're repurposing and not wasting any steel. Because that amount of steel right there is about an eighth of a shipping container. Absolutely. So we take a shipping container, we cut it in slices like a loaf of bread, and then there's uh, 42 solar panels on the roof. Uh, that gives us about 20 megawatt peak installed capacity of solar. Kilowatt? And 20 uh, kilowatt or megawatt? Did I say megawatt? You did. <laughs> That'd be it, nice. It would be nice. We'll generate about 20 megawatts in the course of a year. Great. Uh, but on the roof, we've got 20 kilowatt peak. And the charging is a little bit slower because... The charging is um, 7 kilowatts, 11 or 22. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that it's uh, the most important thing to do. We're, we're actually driving electric cars because we're trying to save the planet. Right. And charging them at high speed, as uh, dare I say the oil multinationals are encouraging you to do, uh, is not the right thing to be doing for the environment. Uh, most people with a, a, an ICE vehicle are, char are filling them on the way to work in the morning or the way home in the evening. And that's exactly the period, if you're charging an electric car, when the grid is most stretched in terms of the ability to cover that. So invariably, if you're charging an electric car rapidly at 7 in the morning or 5 in the afternoon, you're probably putting electricity into your car that's been generated from uh, a gas peaking plant so a fossil fuel to create the electricity to drive your zero emissions vehicle sort of defeats the object and if this is at work or even at the movie theater you don't want to charge in 20 minutes exactly right so this is what we would uh, call destination and workplace charging where cars are going to stand for a minimum of two hours so if you take my car here which is a kia um, that will charge quite happily on this unit at 11 kilowatts. So, very simple sums. And you're I stuck here all day. For two hours. Right. I've got 22 kilowatts I've then charged, and with that, I can drive about 100 miles. So, if you're getting 20 kilowatts off the roof, and if for some reason there's only a couple cars here, that's self sustainable. That's self sustainable. And of course, at a lot of workplaces, there's nobody there on a Saturday or a Sunday. So, uh, in, particularly in the summer, when we've got excess power, it's going into a battery. Mm -hmm. And that same battery can be charged at night from low carbon, low price grid power uh, and boost the entire system. So, the big benefits of this is it's really fast. Uh, it comes in at about six hours. Sides are bolted down. It comes in off a truck with a, a, a crane on it, unloads itself. We open up the wings, depending on which orientation the sun is at. And um, within six hours, we're charging cars. So if a client needs one for three months or six months. That's an ideal solution. We prefer to have a much longer. Of course, agreement. of course. But we don't sell them, we rent them. Okay. And that's very important. So um, no planning permission because it's a temporary structure. 
no new grid connection because we can cope with 120 amps on three phase. Um, and around about, during the course of a year, around about 30% of the power is going to come straight off the panel. Thir around 13% generated, 30% 30, 30 generated right here. Right here. And parking in the shade is also nice. Parking in the shade is nice in the summer. Parking in the dry in the winter is also nice. And you can see here we've got lightings. We've got CCTV cameras. So we've actually won an award for, for safe parking from an organization called Charge Safe. Um, it's, it's a nice place to come and charge. So where did the idea come from, Tim? <laughs> well, I had a retirement plan. Mm. Um, to build a container house, a house out of a shipping container in the Canary Islands. I've got a building plot in the Canary Islands and I was going to go there five years ago, off-grid, fill my shipping container and go fishing. Um, and then this idea came of adding solar to it, adding EV charging, and I didn't retire, I carried on working instead. Pretty soon it gets a little out of control. I've got a photo actually, I don't know if we can bear with me for... Let that go, that's fine. Um, I can show you. I've actually got the very original sketch that we did of this. Here it is. Here, let's turn this way. In, in, there we go. Including the scratch on my phone, which, for which apologies. That's the very original sketch of this from uh, November 2020. In the middle of COVID, when we were a little bit bored, we were looking, thinking of other ideas, and that was the sketch we came up with. There we go. That's very cool. What gets you up in the morning? My grandchildren. And yeah. I don't mean that. Uh, they make a lot of noise and they wake me up. Why do we do this business yeah. at all? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a bit sad already that electric vehicles, we've sort of lost the reason that we're doing it already in this short space of time. We're actually doing it to save the planet. We're trying to reduce carbon emissions and we're trying to improve air quality by cutting out NOx emissions, particularly in town, in city centres. And I've got grandchildren, so you look into the future and you think, you know, 70, 80 years time, there's still going to be a bit of me on this planet. I want to leave something better behind. And that's what gets me up in the morning. So when you were saying that the fossil fuel companies really want you rapid charging during peak times, there's a second part to that. They don't want you rap they want you rapid charging, but they actually want to keep you for 20 minutes. Mm. They want you for 20 minutes, so you go into the supermarket franchise on the forecourt, you buy a very expensive cup of coffee, you do your weekly shop at 10, 20% more expensive than you do it at the local supermarket. It's all a little bit cynical. But that's what they want you to do. They've got the, they've got the um, real estate already there, the network. They've got to do something with it. And they can't allow the EV trade to pass them by. Well, I'll add a couple more components to that. One is if, you're, if it takes you 20 minutes to charge versus five minutes to gas, they're going to be trying to push you back to gas. And when you rapid charge, your battery doesn't last as long. That's another true fact. But look at the pricing of EVs in the UK. Just charging at 175 kilowatts for example let's take shell recharge to, to name a um a culprit if you like uh shell recharge at around about 70 pence a kilowatt hour that's costing you 25p a mile for the electricity oh wow diesel and petrol is around about 12 or 14p a mile so why would i ever switch to electricity if it's going to be double the price hmm that's crazy and rapid charging has the VAT at 20% as opposed to home charging at 5%. Correct. So they get you both ways. They get you both ways. And then you're paying the markup and the middleman. The, the biggest benefit I've seen is that the congestion charge in London is high enough that if you have to drive in every day, that would just about cover your car payment. It certainly would. And, but look, I'm driving, I should be driving home tonight on the sunshine that's fallen on this canopy during the course of the day. Shell in your petrol and diesel are using the sun from 200 million years ago because it was the sun that grew the tree that fell over that produced the fossil fuel they're they're plundering solar uh, carbon sequestration from 200 million years ago and we're doing it straight away real time yeah the, yeah they are absolutely uh using solar power from a very long time ago absolutely right and uh and without a time machine i'm not familiar with the way to make more of it there is no more of it. We all know that there's no more of it. So it's becoming more difficult to find, more costly to find, more environmentally damaging to find. And of course, the truth is, if you go back 100 years, Henry Ford's very first car was designed to run on peanut oil. 
a renewable energy source. It was the sun from last year when the peanuts were growing. We're doing it with the sun from straight away. The other thing I've noticed is there are a million clever, unique, irreplaceable uses for petrol products that don't involve setting them on fire. <laughs> stop burning stuff. Well, stop burning stuff, especially if it's stuff that can be used to make other things that are valuable. Absolutely. But you, it's a system that we're in, and we've got into this mess over around about 100 years since we've been running combustion engine vehicles. Uh, and we've got less than 10 years to change that now and get the EV uh, revolution underway. Hydrogen will play a factor, I'm sure. But again, it's up there. It's free. It's there every day. The one thing you know for sure at the moment is that you're saying what gets me out of bed the sun coming up. Yeah. All right. Well, Tim, I do want to thank you for your time. Uh, 3ti.co.uk. Check it out to learn more. It's a pretty neat solution, and it uh, appears to be pretty much one of a kind. At the moment, it's one of a kind, yeah. So that was it. Yeah. Thanks to my patrons, all that good stuff. Subscribe, everybody else, you know what to do. What do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it all in them comments below. Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in the shade, perhaps. Oh, also I should mention, also I should mention, hey, uh, on Saturday, I'm gonna be at uh, an EV and uh, coffee event in, uh, in Vancouver, Washington. You should come and check me out for that. Next month I'm going to be uh, next month I'm going to be in Michigan for the Michigan uh, Tesla event, the Owners Club there. They're hosting a meet and greet for me, and I'll also be at the big uh, Beach Drive and the Top Secret event on Sunday. That'll be fun. Lots of events, always more events. In August, at the end of July, I'm also I'm also going to be at uh, the California Takeover. You should check me out there. And uh, then in August, I've got two super secret events coming up. One in Longview, Washington, one in Scapoose, Oregon. You should check me out at either of those. It'll be lots of fun, I promise.